How many of you guys are ready for today? How many of you guys got a, uh, your notes? Did you guys pick the notes up on your way in? Good, good. If you didn't, maybe you'd raise your hands and maybe the ushers could get you one. And uh, 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 you can write some things down. And so... Um, I want to start, you know, we've been in this, we've been in this series for the last two, uh, two weeks. This is our third and final week. And we've been talking about being certain in uncertain times, being certain in uncertain times. And we defined certainty as to know for sure, to know something for sure, or to be established about something beyond a doubt. And, and we, we looked at this point, uh, and we've looked at it for the last two weeks, and that is, is that stability is determined by what our faith is in. The stability that's in your life as a believer is determined by what your faith is in. We, we reference what Paul said in 1 Corinthians uh, 2 and 4 and 5. It says that faith cannot rest in the wisdom of men, but it must rest in the power of God. And so we've, we've discussed that, and I don't want to spend a bunch of time on that, but uh, we've been talking about this idea of stability. And so I brought in a, a, an illustration. How many of you guys know what this is? A few of you. Well, for those of you that didn't raise your hand or don't know or don't care, this is a level. This is a level. And uh, if you are a uh, carpenter or you enjoy building things or uh, you've ever built something, if you're a Let's just put it this way. If you're worth your weight as a carpenter, you know what this is and you use one of these. Now, if you don't use one of these, <sighs> us other carpenters are shaking our heads in, in disbelief. But what does, what, does a, what does a level do? A level shows us what is actually perfectly level with the world. And anybody that's a type A personality like myself, that bubble has to be dead center, okay? It has to be right in the middle. It can't be a half a bubble off. You know, there's some people that they'll build things and it's like, ah, it's okay if it's a half a bubble off. I, I used to work with uh, Larry McAlpine and we used to put the, up these uh, uh, mall partitions when they were working on things in, in, uh, in the mall when they begin to do a project. And, and uh, we would always joke because we had to stand that wall up straight and square and my you know when I was I, I was on it it's like I'm waiting you know and I'm waiting for that sucker to be right on and I'm like all right tack it now now Larry I would give Larry a hard time because Larry has a short leg so he kind of has he leans to one side and so I would say now Larry got to make sure you take into consideration the one short leg as you read the level of life he doesn't really have a short leg but I like to give him grief about it the point is this is that much as a, we use a level to build things in life, to build things right, the true way, all of the craftsmen in here, the true and the only way we use a level to make sure that it's straight, to make sure that it's square. We, 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 don't, we don't consider not using that. But here's the thing, guys. The same thing is true in this, that this is an instrument for making sure things are level in the natural, but God has given us an instrument to make sure that things are level and square in our spiritual lives. This right here is what will help to make sure that we are on the straight path, that we are on the narrow path, that we are doing what it is that we need to be doing. This is the level, so to speak, or the instrument that God has given to us. And so, you know, if we want to have a, a stable life, a stable and certain life, we have to make sure that, that this level is in our life, that we're carrying this, that we're reading this, that we're opening it up, that we're looking at it, because this thing's going to show us if we're a half a bubble off. And, and there isn't really a week that goes by that I don't look at this and realize I'm a half a bubble off. I need to adjust this. I need to change this. I need to do something different. I need to, you know, make this adjustments in my life. But if I'm not looking at this, I don't know where the bubble is. I don't know if my life is off. And I think a lot of times is, is that it's, it's not until all of the wheels fall off the bus, so to speak, that we realize, man, we're in trouble. Well, the whole time we were running, we were running uneven. We were running out of balance. And, and, and so uh, we have to ensure that we are looking at the level of life, the instrument that God has given to us. I, you know, and as I think about this idea of a level in our lives, I'll never forget 
Years and years ago, I, I uh, uh, hung siding with my Uncle Phil, and we went to this one job, and I will never forget it because, you know, when I walked onto this job, and I, you know, what you do is you walk onto a job, and you start to look at the, at the project. You look at what you're going to do. You look at where things are. You look at where you're going to set all your stuff up, but I could not get away from what it is that I saw when I walked on this job. I couldn't even believe it. They had added on to this house, and I start looking at the foundation, and I'm looking at this foundation, and I am not kidding you, in 24 foot, right? So about as long as one of these pews, the, the foundation went at an angle. In, in probably 24 foot, it dropped 10 inches. And then what they did, and this will make all these builders in here cringe even more, they just laid a little, a little stem wall right on top of it. They just went along and they poured it, and so it was like a, a little triangular piece of, of concrete. And I'm looking at this thing, and I'm thinking to myself, somebody didn't use a level. Somebody didn't just decided, well, I'm not gonna use a level, I really don't care. And, and I looked at this and I thought to myself, how could anyone build a, 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 an addition and go to all the expense and all the time and energy and effort and build on such something that's so subpar? And, and I mean to tell you guys, that whole job was so frustrating because it didn't matter what wall we were on, it was out of, a, out of alignment, it was not square, everything we had to cut, was never a, we were never able to cut it straight. And I mean, from, from beginning to all the way to the top, I'll never forget standing out on a big you know, uh, plank and I'm nailing into nothing. There's nothing there because they didn't run. And, and, and here's the point. The point is, is that the foundation that that house was laid upon was not right. And so today, much as this foundation was completely wrong, I want to talk to you guys about the foundation that your life is set on because it is absolutely vital that your foundation is set upon what, what Jesus told us about in Matthew 7, and that's what we're going to be looking at today. And so, you know, uh, whatever your foundation is, it's, it, you have to understand and know this, that it is absolutely vital. You can't just, you know, think about it. It's like, oh, it's okay. It's, it's a half a bubble off. It, it'll be okay. No, you have to understand that, that it will cause problems later. Things will not be right. Things will be off. Things will not, you, you'll, you, you'll bring the uncertainty into your life when you, your foundation is not built upon his word. And so I want to talk to you about a story that's found in Matthew 7. And some of you guys have heard this story. It's a story about two builders. Uh, and, and, but before we go into some of the details of, in this story, I want you to look at what it is that Jesus said. And I'm not even sure that this slides up there, but, but the first thing that Jesus said in Matthew 7, verse 24 was this. He said, everyone who hears these words, that's what he said, everyone who hears these words. And so when I read that, I think to myself, well, wait a minute, Jesus, what were the words when, you know, because you have to understand that, that what he was saying was is that this was the Sermon on the Mount. And, and it's a very, very popular sermon that, that some of you guys have probably heard of. And if you haven't, basically he went up on the side of a mountain and there's all of these people and they're around him. And he begins to preach the Sermon on the Mount. Well, when he makes this comment, this comment that, that everyone who hears these words is at the end of the sermon. Now, if, you, if you've ever studied public speaking, people remember the first thing that you say and the last thing that you say. And so here he is at the end of his sermon and he's saying, listen, who, everyone who hears these words, well, what were the words? What were the words? Well, if you go back into the Sermon on the Mount, the sermon, I mean, it's outlined. It's, it's section after section after section that he spends in chapter five and chapter six. He talks about mourning. He talks about humility. He talks about hungering for justice. He talks about mercy, purity in heart, peace, persecution. He talks about being the salt and the light. He talks about anger, adultery. He talks about money. He talks about worry. He talks about a lot of stuff. And I haven't even gotten to chapter seven. And what's really amazing about it is, is that as he goes through this, he's saying, listen, everyone who hears these words and does them is likened to the person that finds himself, fixes their house on a rock and on a good foundation. And so what it says here in uh, Matthew 7, 24 in the message, I love what it says. It says, these words that I speak, 
Jesus is saying, these words that I speak to you are not incidental additions to your life. All of these points that he makes in the Bible, they're not just incidental. They're not just like, oh, that's, that's good. That's, I like that point. No, they're not incidental words. They're, they're, they're not just homeowner improvements to your standard of living. Listen, listen, look. They are foundational words. Words to build your life on. Now, my question to you is, 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 that, is that how you view God's word? As you, is that how you view the instrument that he has given to you as a believer? Do you see it as, as like this thing is the most vital instrument in my life? Because that's what Jesus was saying. He's saying, listen, the words that I speak, they are a foundation to your life and you need to build your life on it. So the question is, is, is do you value those words? Or, or, or are those words... Ah, oh, you know, those are just stories that my grandma told me. Those are just, you know, nice ideas that, that we use to reassure ourselves when, when uh, we need something. I, I was in a class one time, and, and this guy was actually a professor of seminary, and he said, well, it's just, that, that's not something to apply to your life. It's just, that's just history. You know, and so everybody has an idea. They have an idea or should I say they place a value on the word of God to varying to to less and varying degrees it's all over the map and so my question to you today is is do you place like this is my the foundation of my life is this the most important thing because that's what Jesus was saying he's saying the words that are contained in this bible they're words from me, they're words from heaven, and they, these are what you need to build your life on. Build your life on the word. And, not just, not, and don't just look at those words as incidental words. Don't look at them and just like, oh, okay, you know, Pastor Brian gave me a few points and that's just gonna improve my life. No, 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 this is foundational. It's, 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 it's everything, the, they're, they're the building blocks. And when you look at the Sermon on the Mount and you, you look at those things, they're like blocks of our life. You got the money block, you got the marriage block, you got, you got the business block, you got how to deal with anger, you got all of these blocks that, that he's given us instruction to. And when you make sure that those blocks are in place and you know that they're intact, then, then, then that thing stands right, it stands true. And you have to understand and know those and build them into your life. The word that I speak, they are life. Build your life on them. So how do you see the word? How do you value the word? And, and or are you, do you not place a priority on it? Do you not think it's important? Is it something that, that, that maybe was just passed down through the generations and, and your view or your knowledge or your understanding of the word, when you really think about it, it's maybe based on something that your dad said or your mom said or your grandma said or somebody that you respected. Because I'm here today to tell you that, that your foundation cannot be built upon what somebody else says about the word of God. It can't be based on what somebody else's revelation of the word of God is. Because because it's not your, it's not a revelation to you. It's just a revelation to them. And, and God revealed himself and made himself known to that person, but, but you can't base your foundation off of their revelation. It has to be off of your own revelation and, and your own knowledge and your own value of the word. To be certain in uncertain times, the word should be, found, uh, be the foundation of our life. It has to be. Like, think about it, guys. You know, when, when, when all of these things started happening when at the beginning of COVID, when that all started going on, you, if you rewind and you go back into your life and you think about what it is that happened, how did you view it? What were the thoughts that were going through your mind? What were the feelings that were going through your heart? What was it? How did you view it? Were you afraid? Were you, were you in worry? Were you in anxiety? Because that's an indicator of what your foundation looked like. It, it's an in the indicator of how you value the word or don't value the word. And so you have to ensure that that foundation is strong, it's true, it's straight, it's built on God's word because then when things happen like what we experienced and, and every day when you turn on the news, it's like, what is this, right? It's like, it's okay. My, my foundation's not built on you know what my grandma said or my mom said or my dad said. No, my foundation's based on 
He, he told me that he'd never leave me or forsake me. He told me that, that he'd rebuke the devourer for my sake. He told me, you know, and, and, and when, when that pressure comes to your life to try to push you off and cause you to be unstable in your life, it's like, no, man, the spirit of God rises up out of you because the, the, the word of God is dwelling in your heart and it's coming out of you as a result of your value for it. You know, it, it's kind of like any of the interests that you might have as a person. You, if you, sometimes you can walk up to a person and you can begin to talk to them and it's like, you know that, man, they, they, they know it. Like, this guy right here, you wanna dig a well? Talk to him, it's gonna come out of it. I mean, he could, he could close his eyes and dig you a well and it'd be perfect. He knows all about it, why? Because he has years and years of experience of putting, putting that knowledge and that understanding and he, he figured out a way not to do it and he figured out a way to do it. And, and so he has wisdom and understanding and insight in digging wells. And the same thing is true with the word of God. If you begin to put, it, put your life in it and pour yourself into it and, and allow it to come into your life, then when those things come up against you, it's like it just automatically comes out. When people come up to you and they say, this is what's going on, a word, a, a, a word of encouragement, a verse of scripture just comes up out of nowhere. And you know what? The Spirit of God actually says in the Word of God that it, the Spirit of God will bring to your remembrance those things that you've read, those things that you've studied, those things that you've you know, hidden in your heart. He will bring those things back into your life. When the pressures, when the, when the anxiety, when the worry, when, when those things try to creep into your life, the Word will come out because you valued it, but we have to value it. We have to say, you know what? This thing is the most important thing in my life. We've been talking about that in our small group, you know, in, in some varying degrees that, that no matter what, we have to take time every day to look at that instrument, to look at the instrument of our life to help us to be level. And so we go on here, and, and that is, is that the times in which we live, there's a lot of rain. There's a lot of rain, there's a lot of floods, there's wind, and, and, and it's beating. And, and so now more than ever, it is critical that we have a life that is firmly placed on a proper foundation. Jesus continues with these two builders. And I wanna start with the, the foolish one first, and then we'll go to the good one, right? We start with the bad, and we end with the good. So number one in your notes is this, the foolish builder. He, he hears and doesn't do. Look at what it says in verse 26. It says, and everyone who hears these words of mine and does not do them is like a foolish man. So here we got, we got a foolish man. He hears the word, but he does not do them. Now remember, this is still Jesus talking. He's saying, the foolish man hears my words, but does not do them. He's like a man that builds his house on sand, and the rains fall, the floods come, the winds blow, and, and beats against that house, and, and its fall is great. That's what happens. And so Jesus is saying the, the foolish builder, the foolish man, the foolish woman that, that, that hears the word but does not do the word is likened unto a builder who builds his house on sand. Rains are gonna come, floods are gonna come, and the fall will be great. So I don't know about you, but I don't wanna be like a foolish builder. I wanna be like the wise builder. Look at what it says here. Number two in your notes is this. That's the second builder, a wise builder. In verse 24, it says, everyone who hears these words of mine, and what? Does them, is like a wise man who built his house on a rock. And the rain fell, the floods came, the winds blew, and it beat on that house. But it did not fall. So here we see, we got two builders, they're doing the same thing, they're building the house, but their choices are different, right? The conditions are same, the winds are blowing, the floods are rising, the, the winds beating against the house, but one falls, and one doesn't. I wanna be like the wise man. I wanna be the, the wise man where my house does not fall because Jesus is saying, listen, these words, they're the foundation of your life. You need to build your life on these words. And when you build your life on these words by what? Hearing and doing them, then your life will be stable in uncertain times. And so Jesus called this man wise, the one that hears and does. And so is there anyone in here today? Is there anybody in here where your life, there is rain falling? 
How many of you guys in here, you're, there, maybe the flood is rising? Anybody in here got some wind that is beating on their house? Am I the only one? No, man, I mean to tell you. So, so here is the deal. We all agree that the floods come, the rain comes, the wind blows. But guess what, man? Today is the day. If you haven't you know, been placing an importance on the word of God, if you have not been working and making sure that your foundation is strong, straight, and true, you can begin to do that. You can begin to make that decision that, you know what, every single day, man, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be looking at his words because they are life. I'm going to begin to build my life on those. The wise builder builds his house on a rock. It says in the New Living Translation, it says it's founded on the rock. In the uh, message version, it says nothing moved the house. It was fixed to a rock. So is your life fixed to the rock? or is it on the sand? I brought a picture for you. How many of you guys have ever seen this, uh, this house? This house is in Serbia. Now you're looking at that picture. I know you guys are looking at that, your picture and you're thinking that picture is not real. That is a painted picture. That is not a painted picture. That is a National Geographic. I do not have copyright. Uh, uh, I can't share that. No, I can't share that. But that house is real. Show them the next picture, Jim. Look at that house. That is a real river a real house on top of a rock. It's fixed to the rock. Show them the next picture. There it is. It's a little closer view for you to see that this house is fixed on a rock in the middle of a river. Now, listen, the sun's shining. It's beautiful. I can hear the birds. I can hear the wind blowing in the trees. Come to, can you guys hear that? You guys hear it? It's a great day. It's a great day for that house. It's a great day for that house that's fixed on the rock, am, am I right? Well, look at the next picture. Rains, it's raining. Floods are rising. Wind's blowing. But what's going on with that house? That house is fixed on the rock. It's fixed on the rock. And the same way that that house is fixed on the rock, this is a picture of your spiritual life as a believer. Your house, your, your spiritual life needs to be fixed on the rock of God's word. And it doesn't matter what comes. It doesn't matter if it's sunshine. It doesn't matter if the birds are chirping. It doesn't matter if it's raining, blowing, or flooding. Your life is fixed on the rock and you are not moved. And so that is, how, that is a picture of what your life, when, when you think about the word, when you think about how you value the word, you need, to, you need to remember that house. You need to remember that it's like, you know what? I'm gonna read this word because I want my house, my life to look like that house. That no matter what comes, my house is anchored. It's, it's, it's solid. It's fixed upon the word of God and my life won't move. It doesn't matter what comes my way. It doesn't matter the conditions that come my way. I won't be moved, I won't be shaken, I won't be, I, because he, his word and his promises are true and they will see me through. And, that, and, and when your life looks like that, that's exactly what'll happen. You know, years ago when we built our house, um, I, uh, I, I, I borrowed a couple of different drawings. I borrowed uh, some, some architectural drawings of my dad's house and a couple friends' houses and just kind of looked at them and, and, and then I got some software and I, I designed my house with this software. And I kind of looked at their foundations and I kind of looked at the measurements, I looked at the size of, of the footings and I looked at the walls and, and I designed my foundation based upon the foundation of some other guys. And I thought, you know, I mean, I, I analyzed that to death and I just looked at it and looked at it and looked at it and designed and changed and did all this stuff and I got it all, all done. I was like, okay, I'm done. And, and, and so I printed it off and then I went and I found a foundation contractor and he came to the site and he started looking it over and he took it home and he looked it over some more and he began to give me an estimate and he said, okay, this is how much it's gonna be. And so he digs the hole and he's, we're in the middle of the project and he comes to me and he says, hey, um, I noticed something. I noticed that, that this wall that's up against your garage, it's 40 feet long. I'm like, okay. He goes, well, there, you got nothing in here that, that, that is a pier. And, and I think that there, when you start applying the pressure and the weight of the, the dirt and you get the cars on there and they begin to push in your garage, what's gonna happen is, is that this foundation could fail. And I thought, oh, really? 
And I said, well, okay, so what do we need to do? And he said, well, what you need to do is, is that you need to put in a pier. Uh, and, and what that is, is it's basically, he's like, you know, I see on your basement drawings that eventually you're gonna put a wall right here. And he said, so what we can do is, is that we can put a two foot pier. And what that pier does is it just comes out off of the existing 40 foot wall. And it's, a, it's just a two foot pier that stands straight up and down up against that wall to do what? To support it. And I was like, oh, well, I really appreciate you coming and saying something. Now, he could have been a bad contractor and said, no, we're not doing that, but he didn't. He, he was looking out for me and he said, hey, here it is. What do you want to do with it? Now, I could have heard it and thought, yeah, you know, I'm going to take my, I'm going to roll the dice. I'm just going to, you know, it's okay. It's full 40 foot. He's not real sure. Are you 100% sure that this is going to fail? No, I'm not 100% sure. I, I could have heard what it is that he said and not done anything with it, right? But what? Pressure comes and, and we get those things in there. That, ri- that wall could run a risk of failing. But you know what I did? I didn't do that. I heard what he said and I did something with it. I heard what he said and I said, absolutely. If you need to put an eight foot wall in there, put an eight foot wall. I didn't really care. I, all, I was, all I was gonna do was hear what it was that he was saying and do what it was that he was saying because why? I didn't want my foundation to fail. And the same thing is true in our lives, guys, is that we, when we find ourselves on the rock, we want our house to be founded on the rock. We have to listen to the things that he's saying. Some of the things that he says to us are not fun. They're not easy. They're, they're, it's like, you know, uh, it could be in a marriage situation where, where the Lord, as you begin to look at the word, you'll come across scriptures and, and he'll say, you know, you need to do this differently, husband, or you need to do this differently, wife. And if we're not, uh, you know, tuned into that, we're going to have a hard time. But, but what he's doing is, is the Lord is helping us, no matter if it's a work situation, no matter if it's a with, situation with our kids, we can get that information that we need. We can hear what it is that he, he, what he says, but then the question is, is are we going to do something with it? We have to do something with it because everybody hears. You guys all are here this morning. You're all hearing the same word. The question is, is when you leave those doors, what will you do with what it is that you hear, okay? Because you have to understand that I'm up here and I, I've got natural points, but the Holy Spirit is saying things to your heart. He, he, that's, what, that's his job, is to reveal and to show. And that's what we believe for and we pray for it, for each and every person, kids, youth, adults, that when they come in here, that, that the Spirit of God will speak to them and help them. He wants to help you. The question is, is are, you, are you tuned into that? Do you know that? Do, are you aware of it? Because that's, that's, that's the whole reason for those notes. Write it down. So it could be one word from heaven, one word of instruction that the Holy Spirit is, is speaking right here, right now, or at some point in the service. The question is, what are you going to do with what you hear? Because if you say, Lord, I hear you. I hear you say, I hear what you're saying. I hear you say, do that. And then you walk out those doors and you're like, I'm gonna do that. Guess what? Your house looks like that. Your foundation looks like that. It's founded on the rock. When you do what it is that he says, your house, your life, your spiritual life is founded on the rock. And you are a wise builder. And so today, I want to look at four things here, just in closing, four principles that Jesus talked about. Because if you go back in the Sermon on the Mount, and I encourage you to do that, go back in there and read, just read chapter five and six, and then we're going to look at some points here in chapter seven. Just, just some uh, seven th- or four things that Jesus said here uh, at the end. Because here's the thing, guys. My question to you is this, is what kind of builder are you? What kind of builder are you? Are you a wise builder or are you a foolish builder. And you know how you can know? It's called the squeeze test. Now, we're not having hot dogs today, but if, just go with me. If we were having hot dogs or, or hamburgers, what do you do? Everybody likes mustard. Everybody likes ketchup. What's, what's, some, what's something else you put on your, on your hot dog? Onion. Relish. I hate relish. Relish is gross, okay? So if I grab a, a mustard and I go like this, I'm expecting mustard to come out. Now, if I didn't shake it, the nasty water stuff comes out. That's the worst, isn't it? That is the worst. You know, and if I go to ketchup and I squeeze the ketchup, that's what comes out is ketchup. Now, if you're, if you're like Jenny and you like relish and you squeeze the relish, the relish is going to come out. 
in our lives, when pressure and persecution is applied to our life, there is something that comes out of you. When man, when, when, when things are, are bearing down on you, what is it that's coming out of your mouth? Are, is it words of, of faith? Is it words of, man, I, I know he's gonna come through. I know that he will not forsake me. I know that he's with me. Or is it the other side? I don't know what we're gonna do. This is not looking good. I'm not sure what's gonna happen. That's the squeeze test. And that'll determine if you need to start putting some more of the word into your life. And so really I wanna look at these because these four points, and if we're to remain certain in times in which we live, we have to be smart, we have to be wise builders. And so what does a wise builder do? He hears the word, he does it. And so the first one here is found in verse one of chapter seven, and that is this. You're gonna love this one. Oh, so good. Don't judge. Why? Because Jesus said don't judge and you too will not be judged. But if you judge, you will be judged. Jesus was rebuking these hypocritical people and their judgmental attitudes. That's what he was doing. He's saying, listen, you guys are out and you're judging people and, and, and you're criticizing and you're fault finding and, you're, and you're, you're just looking, you're looking at everybody else and what it is that they're doing. Now, this whole thing when it comes to judgment, it can go into many different areas of our lives okay, on varying degrees. Let's just start at the bottom, okay? Like on Wednesday, last Wednesday night, I walked into Casey's in Oakland, okay? Now you can judge me because I'm buying supper for my kids at Casey's at nine o'clock. Go ahead, judge me. But that's not the point. The point is this, is that I walked in and Shanna Johnston is in there with a cup and she's getting ready to get a cup of coffee. It is well after nine o'clock. And I thought to myself, Shanna, it's well after nine o'clock. She says, this uh, doesn't even face me. Now, here I am, uh, this, is, this is just lighthearted. I'm casting judgment on her, yet it, I have three cans of Red Bull sitting on my desk, <laughs> right? Or three cans of Red Bull sitting in my armrest on my truck. One is empty, two are not. So, so my point is, is that I'm trying to illustrate this whole idea of judgment because this idea of judgment, guys, you can laugh about that, but what about your marriage relationship? What about how you look and view your husband or your wife? What about maybe how you're looking and viewing at your kids and judging and looking critically at what it is that they are or are not doing? What about the church? What about your job? I mean, you, you, you take everything that's in your life and you think about it, Think about the things in your life that you're critical about, that you're fault-finding about. Because if you're critical and you're fault-finding in any of those areas of your life, you're doing exactly what Jesus said not to do, and that is judge. Now, I don't want to spend a bun bunch of time on it, but you know, there is you know, we are to judge according to the word, okay? We are to operate as a church and operate as believers, and, 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 but there's a time and a place for those situations. I'm talking more individually in your own life. Are you critical? Are you fault-finding? Are you a person of judgment and casting judgment on people? Because Jesus said very clearly, this is foundational. This is one of my words, do not judge. So do you find yourself easy, easy, easily finding fault in people. Look at what it says here in verse four. How can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye, when all of the time there is a plank in your own eye, you hypocrite? First take the plank out of your own eye, and then you will be able to see, uh, see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. And so that leads us to this point, to remove the plank from your eye. Remove the plank from your eye. What does that mean? You have to examine your life. Guess what, you can't examine your life if you're not in here. Well, I examined my life. Did you read the Bible? Nope. Well, then how did you examine your life? Because when you examine your life, I mean, you could start in Proverbs, and Proverbs would tell you so much about the things and the way and the, and, and the actions of your life and what it is that you're doing, because it will help you to see I'm gonna examine it according to the word of God. And that's what Jesus is saying. Examine your own life and look at how you're living. Focus on removing the things in your life to bring honor and glory to God. Remember what it said in James, what James said in chapter one, verse 22. It says, don't, don't just listen to God's word. You must do what it says. Otherwise, you will be uh, only fooling yourself. For if you listen to the word and you don't obey it, it's like, 
glancing into a mirror with your face. You just glance into the mirror and you see yourself and then you walk away and you forget what you look like. But if you look carefully into the perfect law that sets you free, if you do what it says and you don't forget what you heard, God will bless you for it. So here's James, he's echoing what it is that Jesus said that, listen man, you can't just be a hearer of the word only. Because if you're a hearer of the word only, you're like the person that walks up to the mirror, you glance at it and you walk away and you don't do anything with it. But when you walk up to the mirror of God's word and that's exactly what it is, You can read the word of God and you can go to the word every day and say, I'm gonna read the Bible. Why don't you go to the Bible and let the word read you? Why don't you go to the word and let the the word show you and and give you a picture of what it is that you need to change? Oh man, I got this on here. Oh, I got this on here. It'll it'll begin to show you the the imperfections and the things in your life that that need to change, but you have to look at it because if you don't, you're like the person that, that is unwise and foolish. Both, both Jesus and James said the very same thing. And so, so listen and don't do means we're fo- a fool. We're fooling ourselves. If we listen and we do it, we're, he'll, it says, the word says it'll set us free. And, 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 and I think that that's sometimes the problem is, is that we get impatient. It's like I hear the word and I know I need to do the word. And, and then we think it should come just like a McDonald's order right? should just come right out the window and everything in my life should change. No, no, no. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, is that it's, it's a daily routine. Every single day, I'm going to, I'm going to hear God's word and I'm going to do God's word. I'm going to hear God's word. I'm going to do God's word. I'm going to hear and do, hear and do, hear and do, hear and do, hear and do in my job, hear and do in my marriage, hear and do with my kids, hear and do in my church, because that's when he will set us free. That's when the blessing will come is over the course of time. So, Don't judge, remove the plank from your eye. Number two is this, don't bargain with God. What do I mean by that? It says in Matthew 7, 7, don't bargain with God, be direct, ask for what you need. This isn't a cat and mouse hide and seek game that we're in. What Jesus is talking about here is he's talking about prayer. He's saying seek, he's saying ask, he's saying knock, you know, and and prayer is foundational to our lives. But I think many times that's what we use prayer as. It's like, man, I need something. I need something now, Lord. Oh, man, you gotta help me. Or we'll go to God and and we say this. Okay, here's the deal, Lord. I really got this going on. And if you do this, I will do this. That's what we do. That's how we approach God. We we don't talk to him until everything's hitting the fan and, and the house has fallen off of the rock and we need his help and we need it now. And so what do we do? We go to him and we try to we we try to bargain. But that's not how Jesus is telling us to, to pray. He's saying that in Hebrews eleven six 6, it says that without faith, it's impossible to please God. And for whoever will draw near God, um, we must believe that he exists and he's a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. You know, when we, when we make that decision to hear and do, hear and do, hear and do, that's all we do, hear and do. I hear and do his word. Every day, I I value his word, I hear and do his word. You know what'll happen? When you open up your mouth to pray, the words that you have read and studied and meditated on will come flowing out in your prayer. You'll just be amazed, it's like, you know, when, you're, when you have a financial need, it's just, just, you know, oh, okay, yeah, if I seek first the kingdom of God, all of these other things will be added unto me. When, you know, I, it says that if I honor him, he'll honor me. It says that if I honor him, he'll rebuke the devourer for my sake. And as you're praying for that need, you can just say, Lord, I just wanna give this to you. I wanna cast this care on you. I know that what your word says, it says that you won't leave me, it won't forsake me. It says that you will meet and supply every single need. That'll just come out of, in your prayers. And so your prayers will go from this bargaining with God to a faith-filled prayer that it's like, just like the, uh, it says that the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man and woman availeth much. Well, what makes us righteous and what is, is, is the word and it comes out. And so when we're praying, it just comes out and it's fervent. It's like, Lord, I just want to thank you. I know that your promises are true. I know that it says this. And so God responds to that fervent, faith-filled prayer. And so we can't bargain with him. And if you find yourself in that place of bargaining with him in your prayer life, you need to understand that's not how he, he doesn't operate. He doesn't um, um, respond to that. He responds to a person that is in faith. 
You know, it's, it's kind of like Jesus went on to say. He talked about a dad and how dads would never give their child. Like if a child asked for, you know, uh, bread, he wouldn't give them a serpent. Some versions say serpent, some say snake. You know, that, that, that a dad would never do something unkind to their, to their child. If a child asked them for something, they would never, you know, just give them something that would hurt them. The same is true of your heavenly father. He loves you, he wants you to have it, but you gotta approach him in faith. And so a lot of, I guess my encouragement to you would be is that if there's something that you need before you go straight to him and say, Lord, I need this, maybe pause for a minute and say, you know what, I'm gonna go to the word of God. I'm gonna see what the word of God has to say about this. I'm gonna get a few scriptures. It doesn't have to be a lot. Maybe it's one, maybe it's two. And then when you go to God, you say, Lord, I'm coming to you in faith, faith upon what it is that you told me in your word. And, and this is my need. You told me to come. You said you'd give me good gifts. And I'm basing my ask off of what it is that you said. And when you base your ask off of what it is that he said, that's faith. That's trust. That's believing that he's going to come through. That's believing and knowing that he's hearing what it is that you're saying. So don't bargain. Pray in faith. And that was the second point. Number three is this. Don't look for shortcuts. Verse 13 says, don't look for, uh, for shortcuts. The market is flooded with surefire, easygoing formulas for a successful life that can be practiced in your spare time. Don't fall for that stuff. Even though crowds of people do, the way to life, to God, is vigorous and it requires total attention. And so don't look for shortcuts. How many of you guys have ever tried a shortcut? Anybody in here? Am I the only one? Years ago, we went out to Montana to uh, just help a farmer, rancher do some stuff. And uh, uh, it was just a population control issue that they had with some varmints. And so we were going out there and we had never been out there before. And so we're heading out and uh, I don't even know where we're at, man. I'm in the back seat with two other dudes. That's never fun for, you know, a, a long hundreds of mile trip when you're shoulder to shoulder with some guy. But I was just happy to go, you know. And, and unfortunately, I was not navigating. And unfortunately, our phones, we were out in the middle of nowhere, had zero service and nobody had downloaded a map. Actually, I think my brother had half a map. I'm like, that's not going to help us. And so here he is, he's up there in the front and he's looking at this thing, he's like, and, and we're trying to find the shortest way there, man. We wanna get there. We don't, wanna, we don't wanna spend the whole time driving. And so Greg's looking at the map and he's like, well, this looks like a shortcut and maybe we should take this. And so we're heading out and we're just blasting down this road. I mean, we are driving way above the speed limit and there's five guys in a truck and we're just heading out there and we're just gonna have a good time. And we're, we get about 50 minutes down the road and we realize, yeah, we're lost. We don't, know, we don't know where we're at. And that shortcut that we thought was a shortcut was not a shortcut. And so, man, we're looking, we're, there's no one, there's no one, there's no service. And so we come up to this long driveway and we pull in there and, I mean, we are city slickers, right? We got the, the, the truck and it's shiny. Dad washes his truck out before every, every trip, so it's just shiny. And here we are out in the middle of nowhere. And I'm sure that these people, when they saw us coming down the driveway, were like thinking to themselves, city people. And so we roll the window down, these little kids come out, and, and I'm, not, I'm not, not trying to be judgmental, but they, it was, like a, it was right out of a scary movie, okay? <laughs> because the property that we were on, it was like a scary movie, and, and, and it was not well kept, and the doors were falling off the house, and the windows were broken out, and we didn't know if anybody lived there, and out comes somebody walking out. And they're looking at us and, and, and they didn't have, I mean, they just, it was a scary movie. So we rolled the window down a little bit. <laughs> hey, do you know where we are? <laughs> no response, not none, zero. I mean, mom came out, dad came out. I think dad was holding a gun and they did not tell us where we were. And so we just slowly turned around and we rolled the window up and we're just like, okay, go, 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 go. We don't want to be shot. And we drove out of that driveway all because of a shortcut that we didn't know we were on. We can't take shortcuts with God. And so uh, Proverbs 4.14 says this, do not do not enter the path of the wicked and do not walk in the way of evil. Avoid it and do not travel on it. In a few scriptures later in verse 18, it says that the path of the just is like the shining sun. It shines even brighter unto the perfect day. 
But listen, guys, it requires our attention. We can't have a shortcut. It requires our attention. And it goes on to say that we are to enter by the narrow gate. I want to show you another picture here. And this is uh, in Montana. And, and actually, it's not a picture from Montana. But when you go to Montana, these fences right here, at least on the ranch that we are on, are just everywhere. I mean, not everywhere. You got to drive miles. But there's a lot of gates like this where you push the thing in and you open it up and you can drive a whole herd of cattle through it. You can drive a whole truck through it. You, I mean, it's, it's a wide gate, okay? And so, but we went on this horseback ride here a few years ago and I don't have a picture of the gate, but show them the, show them the video. So you can see here that on the left, it's very, very, it's very, very windy. But it's, it's straight down. I mean, it it's really gets steep and gets away and starts going off. And you can see that this path, it's really, really kind of narrow. And eventually, we have to get off the horses. Like, that's at the point in the story where I'm like, he says, get off the horses. I'm like, get off the horse. Why are we getting off of a horse? We're walking down this, this narrow path. And he says, you need to get off the horse. I'm like, why do you need to get off? Because it's slippery. It's, 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 it's dangerous. It's treacherous. You can't be on top of the horse. You have to lead the horse down the thing. But up here ahead, there is a gate because the fence comes up and it comes right onto the peak of this, of this thing. And the, it's, a, it's like a little mini gate. It's just like the one I just showed you, but it's like a little mini one. He pushes it open and it's wide enough for a horse to walk through. And, and, and so we, what do we do? We all kind of walk, walk our horse right through it. We couldn't get two horses. We couldn't get, you know, we didn't all go through it once. It was one at a time, single file, horse, me, horse, me, you know? And so, and that's what Jesus is saying in our lives that, that the road that, that many people are on, it's, it's wide. And there's a lot of people on it. It's busy. It also says, the Bible says it's an easy road, right? And so my question to you today is, is that are you on the wide road or are you on the narrow road? Because if the road that you're on, there's a lot of people, there's a lot of people. This is easy. We're having fun. You might be on the wide road. But Jesus said, narrow is the way. Enter by the narrow. I read this this, this week. I've never, I never do this. In a lot of the cities in the biblical times, they had big walls around their city. And during the day, the gate, the big wide gate, the big heavy wide gate was wide open. And people would come and they would go out of the city and they would travel and traders would come in and all of this. But at night, they'd shut that gate. You guys remember the uh, story in the Bible that talks about the rich young ruler and how he, sa he said, sell everything you have and you, you can come in. And he said, I can't do it. And he said, it's easier for a camel to enter the eye of a needle. Remember that? That gate that's on a city at night, it would be shut. But you know what they had inside of that gate? They had another gate which was considered the eye of the needle. Because what it was is it was a single door that people that were travelers that weren't you know, looking to do harm to the city, there'd be travelers that would come and they would open up the gate, open up that little gate and let people in. And Jesus said that in our lives, that, that, that the wide path, it's easy, but it leads to destruction. But this narrow path, it's the one that leads to life. It's the one that leads to blessing. And that's the one that we need to be on. And so in your notes, we need to enter the narrow gate. Lastly, number four is this. Don't miss the boat. It says in uh, uh, Matthew 7, 21, knowing the correct password, saying, master, master, for instance, it's going to get you anywhere with me. What is required, and that, this is my second point, is this. It requires serious obedience. And, and what, what, to give you some context about that verse is that there's coming a day when we all stand before our, our father and we're gonna give an account for our life and how we lived it. And he, he, he said in this, Jesus said this, I didn't say it. Jesus said that there's gonna become people that come and say, master, master, Lord, you knew me. I did this and I did this and I helped here and I did this. And he's gonna say, I, did, I didn't know you. And, he, and he's gonna say, be gone. And so this is indicative of serious obedience on our part. I'm not trying to scare you into something. It's just that, man, this is just who I am. I, I am going to, my life is built on him and, and our lives must be built on him. 
that each and every day, we're not playing games, we're not trying to bargain with God. No, man, we're on that straight and narrow. And he'll help us, he'll guide us, he'll lead us, he'll direct us. As we look at his word, he'll help us. He'll tell us when we're out of level, he'll help us square us all up. And then when that rain comes and the flood comes and the wind's beating on it, we can know and be assured that, man, our, our house is not gonna fall. Why? Because we've done, the, we've done, I know that this is a bad way of saying it, but actually it says it this way in the message. We, we, we put the word to work. We put it to work. And we, you know, and, and as I was talking with Rachel about it, she said, well, sometimes when, when, when we, you say put it to work, it's like, well, if I have time, I'll do it. And so I didn't put it to you that way today, guys, because it, this is just, it's just who I am. It's just what I do. I'm doing this. I'm putting it into work. I'm, I'm working the word of my life. I'm, it's just who I am. When you squeeze me, that's what comes out. And when we do that, you can be assured that you'll be stable in uncertain times. You'll be, you'll, you'll be able to be that, that, that support, that encouragement to the people that are not, the people that are on the wide road, the people that are walking alongside of you, and that, that, that you can see and hear the fear in their heart and in their, in their voice. And you, can, and you can say, you know what, come alongside me. You know, that, that house that I showed you, you know why they built that? It was for swimmers. Swimmers, these swimmers built it because they'd swim in the river and they needed a place to rest. So they'd crawl up on this rock and in and, and, and the, the hot sun, they decided, hey, let's build something up here. And the kayakers and the people were out kayaking, things like that. And so they built this house so that it was a place of refuge, a place where they could get safety and get warm and, 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 and be you know, out of the sun. When your life is built on a rock, that's what you are to people. Your life is that place of refuge. Your life is that place of strength. Your life is that place of stability for the person that is lost, that is hurting, that's dying, that, that you can say, hey, come on into my house. I've got a firm foundation. It's fixed upon the rock. Let me show you what it is that I know and begin to teach them and help them and encourage them. Man, in these last days, we have to be about the Father's business. He told us to go into all the world and preach the gospel. He did not tell us to come to the church and sit here and be comfortable. He did not tell us that. We've heard, guys, I've been in this church for 40 years. I, 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 the first service, I was in a crib in the corner. There's, there's people that are out there, they're hurting, they're dying. We've heard. We heard, we've heard and heard and heard and heard and heard and heard and heard. It is time to do, 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 do. And I tell you what, if we can't get past, and, I, and I'm not saying I'm perfect, guys, I'm not saying that, but we've gotta get past our own personal shortcomings. We gotta move way past that because we can never help anybody if we don't move past our own shortcomings. But we're never gonna move past our own shortcomings if, if we're not looking at this. God help us to move past our shortcomings so that we can reach the people that truly need you. That is my prayer. As a believer, it's like, Lord, yes, I, I need to examine myself. Yes, I need help. But man, help me to move to another level that I can walk and live in victory in my life. That no matter what's going on, I can share what it is that I know. I can help people. And that's what our you know, desire should be as believers. That it's like we are that house on a rock, that refuge, that place for people. There's people in here, you guys have been believers for years. It's like, take what it is that you know now, do it, step out. I don't care how young, I don't care how old, I don't care how new you are as a believer. As you begin to build that rock in, of, of your life on his rock, it will have an influence. We are called to be an influence, amen? Let's bow our heads. Father, we just come before you. We thank you, Father God, for your word because it's alive, it's living, it's powerful. It's what changes us, Father. And God, I pray that today as we have studied your word and as we've listened to what it is that Jesus has said unto us, Father God, that we will not just be hearers of the word only, but doers. That we will walk in, in, in strength, that we will walk in boldness in what it is that we know in our personal lives. And I thank you, Father, for it. Today, if you're in this place and you're far from God, today is the day to get close to him. Today is the day to make the decision to move close, to move back, to move back into him 
If you're that person and you're far from him and he is not a part of your life, maybe you're unsaved, maybe you're that person you're, and you have never given your heart to Christ, today is the day to get close to him. Is there anybody here? Anybody in the sound of my voice? Anybody at all? All right, Father. We thank you, Father, for your word. It's alive, it's powerful. And today, Father God, I know that I've been challenged. I know that there are people that are in here that have been challenged. God, I just pray that as we go from this place that, that your command to us, which was to go into the world, would burn so hot within each and every one of us that day in and day out, we would build our life upon you, that we would build our life upon you, and then we would reach out, and then we would help, that we would help restore, and we would, we would encourage people, Father, that we won't just walk through life with our head down, but we will look up, we'll, we'll lift up our eyes and begin to look around at the people that are around us and share the love of Christ, share the knowledge of Christ with them so that they too can be set free. And so I just thank you that today as we leave this place, it will burn like fire within us. With passion, we will go forth and with boldness, we will go forth to share the good news of Jesus. And we thank you, Father, for it in Jesus' name. Amen. You may look up here. We're going to close the service with one last song. We're going to commit what it is that Jesus has said and spoken to us today. Listen, if you are a person and you have a need in your life, we have a prayer team down here and they want to pray with you. The word says that if any two of you agree is touching anything, it'll be done. So I'd encourage you. You can come right down through the middle. You can go around, whatever you feel comfortable with. Just come down here. They've got resources, they want to agree with you, they'll pray with you, and, and, and you will watch things change in your life. So go ahead and sing and come on down.